Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. Today I have an amazing YouTube pop collaboration with a few of my artsy friends. This is called the Purple Vibes YouTube Pop and we have a lot of sponsors and lots of prizes to give away so check this out. Read along the screens to see what you have to do in order to win and enter the giveaways. Here is a picture of all the sponsors and you can visit my website or look in the description area below to see the names of all the sponsors and links to everything. So I'm really happy you came to my channel today and I am creating a mixed media altered bird using a paper mache bird that I actually bought at Michael's and some mixed media Finabare products. I wanted to create a very simple bird. I wanted to alter it quite easily. Didn't want to do too much to it or glue too many things to it. I've made a horse before and I can link that below to show you how many metals I've added to that. But for this bird, I just wanted to create a very highly textured bird and not add anything but mediums. The first thing I did is take some Prima Finabare Art Basics Heavy White Gesso and gave the bird a coat of white gesso. This was just to prime it and to just make an even coat all around. And all I did is just take one of the paint brushes and just paint it all around until I covered it. I heat set the gesso really well and then I wanted to add the first layer on the bird's body. I took some cheesecloth and some Prima Fina Bear soft matte gel and added the gel with my sponge brush and then added pieces of cheesecloth to create texture. I love upcycling and using recycled materials that you can add a lot of texture with and they're pretty cheap and that was what I did with this one. I started adding it and sealing it to the bird's background. Now in retrospect I could have skipped this step because I ended up adding more texture with another material and ended up hiding a lot of this. However, this is a great way just to show you that you can use many different materials to create texture. And all you have to do is just glue it to the background. And I kept on cutting pieces from the cheesecloth to be able to glue it and create that texture because it makes it look like feathers. Sometimes when you add the cheesecloth and add some gel with it, it turns to bunch up and create kind of veins on the bird. So what I did is I started to add little pieces of the cheesecloth and roll them to create veins or feather looking strips. So it would give a little bit more dimension and more texture to the bird's body. And that helped also define where I wanted to put the other texture that I was going to add later on. So all I did is just take a piece of the cheesecloth, roll it up, and then add some gel to just hold it in place. And that created really cool veins. So looking back, as I said, I wish I would have maybe kept it this way. I didn't realize I was going to cover everything with the other texture I was adding but you could easily just leave it in this stage and then color it and it would look really nice as well. I didn't have to dry this layer with the cheesecloth because I knew I was adding the same medium which was a soft gel to the background as well. So I took two little cups and mixed some soft gel in each one of them and I took a fairly nice amount of it because I didn't know how much I was going to use. So I put a little bit of each with my sponge brush and then I added two different types of beads to each one of the little cups. For the first one, I added some crystal beads. They're glass beads and they're a little bit bigger, almost like two millimeters or three millimeters in size. And I mixed the beads into the cup, making sure that there is enough beads to cover the gel so it creates a really thick texture. For the second one, I added some silver microbeads. These are the art ingredients from Prima Finaber, and I just kept on mixing some beads in it. I really wanted to create a really thick mixture so when the gel dries it actually doesn't show and then all the beads create a really nice texture. 
So I had very little bit in my little jar of beads. So all I did is just add half of it first. But then I realized that I needed more. So I ended up dumping the whole jar into the little mixing cup. And that created an amazing texture. I grabbed an old paintbrush, one that was already ruined and pretty dry. And I started adding the beads in between the little veins that I created with the cheesecloth. So I picked different areas where I added the glass beads and some other areas where I added the micro beads. It's good to keep some of these paint brushes on hand because although the gel ruins them, it's really easy to just use them for other purposes like applying things that are really messy. So that way you don't have to get it with your fingers. Although I did end up using my fingers towards the end because I got tired of doing it with the paintbrush. As with my fingers, I can control it a little bit easier. But if you keep these old paintbrushes, it's great. If you, know, if you saw my video recently on my YouTube channel, I used a lot of paintbrushes that were old and ruined and I created a really nice canvas. So these paintbrushes never go to waste. And I tend to buy really cheap paintbrushes to do these type of things. So dollar store paintbrushes are perfect for this purpose. The reason why I use both the microbeads and the glass beads is because I wanted two different types of texture. I wanted to have a thick texture with the glass beads and then a more fine texture with the microbeads. And see here, I am starting to add it with my finger because I'm getting tired of the paintbrush. And it's really easy to just pat it down and smooth it out with my finger. So although this is not the ideal situation, I really love using my fingers to add things onto my projects. It, I find it really easy and helpful. And if you don't want to get your fingers dirty like I am and very sticky, you can definitely use gloves and although it's a little bit harder to control the mediums, it is better sometimes than the paint brushes. When you're making a mixture like this, you really never know how much you're going to have. And you're not gonna know how much you're making. It's really hard to kind of gauge it. So I did have a lot or I had enough that I could add even at the bottom of the bird and I felt like I didn't want to waste any part of it, so I kept on adding and creating more and more texture. I did avoid the face as much as I could. I kept the face kind of plain because I really wanted to have that texture on the body and make it look like feathers, but the face, I wanted it to be more plain. So that's why I left it blank. And it does still have texture from the cheesecloth, but not so many beads as I wanted to have for the body. So I just end up finishing the beads as much as I can and putting them in all the empty spaces. And this is what I meant by covering the cheesecloth. I guess I could have skipped that step, but I just ended up using it for having some of it kind of peeking out in between on the bottom of the body and also on the face. Once I finished adding all the beads, I let them dry overnight. And by that I mean almost 24 hours because I knew that they would take a long time to dry and I didn't want them to be moving around when I'm adding the other mediums, especially because I knew that I was going to add sprays. So once they were fully dried, I went back with my heavy white gesso and added a coat of gesso to the background. This was the perfect medium to add as a base for my sprays because I knew I wanted to cover the bird with a lot of different types of sprays and gesso is the perfect medium to have underneath. I made sure I dried the gesso really well because you don't want any wet gesso when you're applying the sprays because that way the gesso might mix with the sprays and create a white mixture and it will lighten them out. So you really want to make sure that it's fully dried. I grabbed a few color bloom sprays from Prima and started at adding it to my bird. I put the bird on top of a paper towel just because I wanted to kind of have it absorb all the sprays. This paper towel can be definitely used on a different project once you're done but right now I just wanted to protect my table. So I started spraying the light colors first and then I went and added some of the darker colors 
and I use many different colors from the color bloom sprays I think I use the sugar plum and the raspberry I can't remember the colors pressed petal and red wine I mean I'm trying to remember the names but I will list them all below so that way you have all the colors names it basically I grabbed all the purple and burgundy colors and I started adding it to my background. First I started spraying them but then I decided that I wanted to add them using a paintbrush. So I always find that there's two ways to add sprays. You could definitely spray them or you could add them with a paintbrush and that's a really great way to do it as well. I had my spray water bottle handy because that helps mix the colors really well. So you can add a few colors at a time and then add the water and it kind of mixes and spreads everything everywhere, which it looks really good. And that way you don't see the spray marks. So I kept on adding colors and this step takes a little bit longer because you need to add a few colors at the beginning then you need to dry them up and then you can add another layer of colors. That helps to build the color up and really make it stand out. And I like mixing the dark colors with the light colors. I like mixing the dark purples with the burgundy looking purples. And that really helps to kind of create a unique color to the background. The reason why I chose all these purples is because this hop is specifically called purple vibes and the main thing of the hop was to use purple colors the purple colors are everyone's favorite colors when they're creating and they really love purple so they made it this theme as the purple vibes and all the projects had to have purple as their main color you could add accent colors, but purple had to be the main color of the project. That's why I chose purple for this bird, but I really feel that it's a perfect color for it because I didn't want it to look like a crow or any other type of bird. I really want it to look vintage and kind of look like royal and purple and gold, which I add later on, is perfect for that type of vintage look. At this point, I heat set the bird because I wanted to make sure that it's dry for the next layer. And I also wanted to add a little bit of gold to the background because I felt it needed a little bit of that shininess in some areas. So I started adding some gold spray. This is actually mica gold mixed in water and I created my own spray with it. It's the Art Ingredients Prima Mica Gold. But I also added some of the marabou gold in some areas because it has a little bit of a different tone. So between the two of them, I created these nice golden highlights to the bird. I heat set the gold color as well. And then I went in with two new colors. These are the marabou sprays, the aubergine and the black, because I wanted to add a little bit more darkness in some areas. So I was trying to create some shadows in certain areas, especially around the wings, to kind of highlight the wings a little bit more. So I started using a paintbrush and painting the wings or just outlining where the wings would be. And then I mixed that color and went and added a little bit of water to just blend everything. So I didn't want it to look like a wing, but I wanted to have that shadow around the area where the wing is. And I added both the black and the dark purple to do this. I did this of course to both sides and then I went back and added more of the burgundy and purple colors from the color bloom sprays because I wanted to have everything mixed back into the background. I kept on adding sprays until I was happy with the results and as you can see my paper towel is soaking wet with lots of different colors and that's okay because I can reuse that for something else. I heat set the bird really, really well. I wanted to make sure everything is fully dry before adding the golden highlights. I took the Prima Finna Bear Aged Brass Wax and using my fingers started adding it all over the background. I find that by using my finger I can really control where it goes and because the areas were raised from the beads I was able to just 
get those really nice textured highlights with the wax and let the shadows of the purple stay in the background. So it was really easy to just add the wax and then have those really nice purple highlights underneath the wax. The wax really helps to create those beautiful golden highlights and makes it look vintage. The wax is permanent and that's why you really don't need to seal it after. It almost adds like a sealant to everything else. It really has a dual purpose because it adds really beautiful highlights but it also seals your project. I really wanted to add a small piece of jewelry to the bird so I went and found a nice piece of jewelry, an old one that I had in my stash and it was just a cute bracelet that I found and I just ended up wrapping it around the neck of the bird. The last thing I did is I wanted to create a little crown for my bird. So I took a piece of paper and drew a small crown onto my paper and then cut it out. Then I took the Marabou Golden Sprays and just sprayed my paper to add that golden color to the background. That created the perfect crown for the little bird. The only mistake I made was not spraying it on both sides because when I actually closed the crown, you could see the white inside it. So I ended up spraying it while it was on the bird's head afterwards because I didn't want to see that white. I used some 3D matte gel to glue the crown onto the bird's head and that added a little bit of that vintage feel to the project. Finally I wanted to add a couple of pearls to the bird to make them look like eyes but I did not have any golden pearls so what I did is I took two white pearls and using the wax, I highlighted on top of them and covered them with the wax. That helped create two golden little pearls for the eyes. And I glued them to each side of the face. Here is the bird and I'm showing it to you from all angles because I wasn't sure if the pictures would show how cute it looks. It really is hard to show sometimes in a picture and show all that texture. And so I really thought it was important to show you all angles and really highlight everything. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. And you continue on with the hop. Make sure you watch all the videos and subscribe to all the channels and comment on each because we're going to pick winners for some of these videos. Thank you so much and have an amazing day. Bye!